In this session, we're going to talk about sequences, which are numbered lists of terms, and series, which are the sum to infinity of, of a sequence. Uh, so there, there are many types of sequence that you're going to come across as an engineer, uh, and there are also many ways of expressing identical sequence. So if we have a quick look at the example, uh, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, dot, dot, dot. OK, here, very straightforward uh, sequence. And there are actually many different ways we can write this down. So we could express it very literally, and we could say, well, this thing actually equals uh, a n is going to equal, well, it's going to be minus 1 when n is odd, and plus 1 when n is even. OK, it's a very sort of literal way of writing this down. Equally, we could write it like this. We could say it's much more succinct. We could say, well, it's just minus 1 to the power of n. So this thing, clearly, minus 1 to the power of 1 is just minus 1. But any even exponent is going to cause that minus sign to disappear and make it positive. Again, we could write this in a slightly more convoluted way and say, OK, well, it's just cos of n pi. OK? So to understand this, we'll just draw a quick graph of the cos function. And what we'll see is. Here we go. Well, at n, so we've got n pi. So here's pi, here's 2 pi, here's 3 pi over here. And what's going on? Well, at pi, it's minus 1, 2 pi, it's plus 1, 3 pi, it's minus 1, and so on. OK, so many different types of sequence, also many different ways of writing down an identical sequence. And these things are identical. They're not similar. They are exactly the same. OK, so sequences and series also come up in nature a lot. So perhaps the most famous example of this is the Fibonacci sequence, which looks like this. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. OK, here's the Fibonacci sequence. This thing turns up in the arrangement of uh, seeds in a head of a flower. It also turns up in the shape and structure of shells in the sea. OK, very different parts of the natural world, but just turns up again and again. It turns out to be a very efficient way of stacking things close together in a spiral formation. OK, there is a more succinct way of writing down this series, which, this sequence, which would be a n equals the term before, oh, sorry, the nth term in this series is going to be the sum of the term before and the term before that. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and so on. So what I'm going to do is just introduce you, or perhaps refresh your memory, about the two uh, most common uh, most commonly bumped into types of series. The first one is the arithmetic series. So the arithmetic series is where you have uh, uh, your series is equal to uh, all the terms will be separated by the same common difference, which we call d. So the first term, a1, to get to the second term, we just say, well, it's just a1 plus d. And the third term is going to be a1 plus 2 times d. And the third term, and the fourth term is going to be a1 plus 3 times d. So we put some brackets to make sure you can spot the different terms. OK, arithmetic series, very straightforward. We're just adding in the same number each time. We can even say, well, we'd like to know the arithmetic series for m terms, which would be a truncated series if m is a finite number. OK, truncated just means sort of cut short in this case. So we can go out, and let's have a look at the penultimate term that this, sequence would, this series would have. And it would be a1 plus, well, the first term's got no d's, the second term's got 1d. So the m minus 1 term is going to have m minus 2 d's. And the final term is going to have a1 plus m minus 1 d's. How do we go about adding this whole thing up without going to the hassle of typing it into our calculator? Well, let's start by, and it's a bit of a sort of neat trick, let's start by re-expressing this thing. So we're going to write exactly the same series down, but this time we're going to express each term in terms of 
the last term rather than in terms of the first term. So we'll call the last term AM, right? So this is just AM, which means that this term here would just be AM minus D. OK, so we can now work back all the way to the first term. So the first term is going to be the last term minus m minus 1 d's. m minus 1 d's. Second term, a m minus m minus 2 d's. And so on. OK, so we've written an identical series in two different ways, okay, but they're totally equivalent. What happens if we add these two together? So we've now got 2SM, okay, and what we see happening is that actually every single term on the top line has got A1 in it, and every single term on the second line has got AM in it. So we're clearly going to have M times A1 plus AM. But what about these terms with the d in it? We've got this m minus 1d that's negative here. We've got exactly the same thing here, and it's positive. So these two are going to cancel out. OK, we've also got a m minus 2d, and we've got a minus m minus 2d. So these are going to cancel out, and this d is going to cancel out. And actually, this thing would cancel out with something in here, and same with this. So all those terms actually just disappear. So this is our expression, and we just rearrange it, and we say, right, well, our sum to m terms of an arithmetic series is going to be m over 2 times a1 plus a m, the final term, which we can rewrite because we know the expression for this final term. So we can say m over 2 a1 plus a1 plus m minus 1 times d. Uh, and we can perhaps neaten that up a little bit. So it's now going to be m times 2a1 plus m minus 1d, all over 2. OK, so we've got our expression for the sum to as many terms as we want of this series. But what happens as we go to infinitely many terms? So what happens of the limit as m goes to infinity of s m. Well, we see very quickly that because we're multiplying by infinity here, unless the contents of this bracket are 0, this thing's going to explode off to infinity as well. In fact, there's only one case where that doesn't happen, and that is where uh, both the initial term and the common difference are both 0, which is quite a boring uh, series. So the only series that doesn't explode is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. In all of the cases, this thing's going to blow up. OK, so that's arithmetic series, probably the most straightforward kind to interpret. We now have a nice closed form expression which will tell us how to add up as many terms as we want. The next one we're going to look at is geometric series. So geometric series, very similar, except that rather than adding the same amount each time, we're going to multiply by the same amount each time. So it's got the same common ratio. So our series looks like this. So to m terms, we can say, well, the first term is going to be a1 again, but the second term this time is going to be a1 multiplied by r, what we call our common ratio. And so the third term can be a1 r squared, a1 r cubed. And then our penultimate term is going to be a1 so the first term's got no r's, the second term's got one r. So our penultimate term's going to have r to the power of m minus 2. And our final term, a1, r to the power of m minus 1. Once again, how are we going to work out what this adds up to without typing it all into a calculator? Well, we've got another trick. So this time, we take our series, and we notice a kind of uh, self-similarity if we multiply the whole thing by the common ratio, r. So now our first term is a1r, a1r squared, a1r cubed, a1r to the 4 plus. And then our penultimate term is going to be a1 to the power of r, m minus 1. And our final term, a1r to the power of m. If we look at these two things up here, what we see is that this term occurs in both. This term occurs in both. And again, 
all the way, except that this is only in one, and this is only in one. So if we take the difference between these two things, if we say SM minus SMR, that's just equal to the first term plus this modified last term. OK, so we now have a very neat expression. And we can do a bit of rearrangement. So we'll factorize both sides. So we say SM equals 1 minus R equals A1 times 1 plus R to the power of M. And we can rearrange that. So we now just have the sum to M terms is just going to be A1 times 1 plus R to the power of M over 1 minus R. What does this mean? Does the series converge? Does it diverge? Well, it depends on the value of r. So there are three separate cases. So if, if r is bigger than 1, or if the magnitude of r is bigger than 1, is bigger than 1, what happens is, well, any number that's bigger than 1 in magnitude is going to keep growing and growing and growing as we put it to a higher and higher power which means that this whole term is going to get dominated by this top line here. So this thing diverges. And what happens when the magnitude of R is, between, is, is, is less than 1? OK, the magnitude of R is less than 1. So we know that any number between 0 and 1, if we put it to a high power, it gets smaller. So for example, uh, a half squared is a quarter to the power of three is an eighth. So actually, in the case where the magnitude of r is less than one, this thing is going to shrink and shrink and shrink until it goes to zero. So we get the limit of uh, sm as m goes to infinity when r is less than one ends up being exactly equal to a1 times one plus nothing over one minus r. Let me just get rid of that plus sign. So we now have a beautiful closed form expression for what happens if you want to add up all the terms of a series like this, assuming that your uh, common ratio is less than 1 in magnitude. The final case is where your common ratio is exactly equal to 1. OK, what happens here? So if your common ratio is exactly equal to 1, that means that you're multiplying by 1 each time. So all the terms have to be the same as the uh, first term. Well, if we look at this thing, 1 to the power of any number is just 1. So we end up with an expression that's just a1 brackets 1 plus 1 is 2 over 1 minus 1 is 0. Well, the function, the operation divide by 0 is actually undefined. So this, this doesn't have an answer, but we just have to pause for a minute and think about what a real case would look like. So if we had the series 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, Clearly, this thing is just going to keep growing as we add more terms. However, there is, once again, another very boring case where if we have the series 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, this thing is going to stay at 0. So this depends on the value of a now. And if a is not 0, then this function will also keep growing forever. OK, so this one converges. So we've now seen two uh, series two very common types of series, and you now know how to uh, analyze them, calculate the sum if you can, uh, and just have a look at whether or not these things will converge or diverge. There are so many more types of series beyond these, and these particular methods of analysis are only applicable to these types of series. So you have to find the right tools for the series that you've got to, to analyze. And what I've put together for you is a kind of uh, a flow chart will hopefully allow you to uh, efficiently work through a step-by-step -step process and say, does it pass this test? No, then it diverges. Does it pass this test? Yes, then it converges. Uh, and ultimately, we wouldn't expect you to remember all these different tests, but we would hope that you would now have the confidence to go away and, and look them up online. Uh, one of the most common methods for analyzing, uh, analyzing series is to start by looking at what is the last term? If you can create an expression for the final term, then you can already say something about the series. Because as 
your number of terms goes to infinity, the final term had better tend towards zero, otherwise clearly your series is going to keep growing. So it's very important to remember that some of these tests are what we call necessary but not sufficient, which means that just because the final term goes to zero, that doesn't mean that it does converge, it just doesn't mean that it necessarily diverges, okay? which is quite a subtle distinction. But imagine if we had a series like this. So I'm going to draw a continuous function, but I'm also going to highlight the points which would represent our series values. Okay, so if our function looked something like this, okay, here we've got a nice function, but what it's got here, oops, is an asymptote, a discontinuity. So if we looked at our values of our series, Okay, clearly, or I'm telling you because it's my function I drew it, this thing is tending towards zero. So if we had tried to work out our final term, and perhaps we could, it would say that the final term is actually zero. But that doesn't mean that our series converges because something's going wrong here at our third term, and it's actually exploded off to, to possibly infinity. So you will now need to look at, uh, in order to do the tutorial questions, a whole range of different tests that you can apply to series in order to work out convergence. But hopefully this introductory lecture has just given you the opportunity to, to build your confidence. Okay, see you next time.